Hi there, I'm Dr. Victoria Mattingly, and this is Better Humans at Work. This week, I'm joined by Pete Schramm, an entrepreneur, motivator, leader, and experience at building and leading large, diverse teams to solve complex problems. Uh, Pete and I share a lot of in our background, so we're both from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and we both recently took the leap. I guess not so recent now. We're like becoming, you know, mid mid stage entrepreneurs over here. But he, like myself, took the leap of faith from the corporate world to focus on his start. Startup, which is called Lattice, L-A-T-T-U-S, and that U-S is very important that we'll talk about here shortly. Uh, the concept came to Pete around March 8, 2018, after he realized that one-on-one -on -one mentoring began filling up, you know, 10 to 20 hours of his week, and he didn't know the answers to all his questions that his mentees had. He built Lattice as a platform to facilitate personal conversations on specific topics to share insights, perspectives, and experiences. Lattice is all about people helping people, which is why I consider Pete a wonderful partner and thought partner in the, the very similar work that we're doing and super thrilled to have him on the show today. Welcome, Pete. It's great to see you. Yeah, V, great to see you. It's always fun catching up with you and our conversations never cease to excite me, energize me and walk away thinking, oh my goodness, we can do so many great things. Um, it was awesome seeing you at the Build 412 Tech event last night and just getting more involved with the, the community. And so I wanted to ask you, when did you make the leap uh, to, to go full time officially? Yeah, so I actually burnt out at my last corporate job. Uh, I always say I felt like as the organizational psychologist, I felt like I was the medical doctor telling my patients not to smoke. And then I'm out back smoking a pack a day. So I'm an organizational psychologist telling my clients to take care of themselves and not burn out. And then I didn't follow any of those best practices, burnt out myself, took some time off. And right when it was time to go back on the market, it's like, I've always been drawn to entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs in general, which I think is why you and I hit it off so well. And I just started putting feelers out there, got my first client, you know, registered the LLC in August of 2019, and then went all in, I would say in January of 2020. So I joined the Founders Institute, just, you know, dove into, you know, being a business owner. I always say, I, I know my, my craft very well of being an organizational psychologist, but being a business owner, and I don't know if you can really late has been a whole steep learning curve of trying to figure out all those aspects. Uh, and yeah, things I've, I've just haven't looked back since we got the logo, the website, uh, realized pretty quickly solopreneurship was not for me and we've been building the team over the last two years. And now we are serving clients and doing the work, but enough about me. I want to hear about your story about Lattice and most importantly about the amazing work you're doing with mentorship, because that's a key component of the work that we talk about all the time over here at Mattingly Solutions when it comes to allies and inclusive behaviors. And so let's hear a little bit more about your story, Pete. Yeah, so, you know, it's exciting to be here. And everybody that's watching this, uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you came from. Uh, you can positively influence where you can go. And you just heard what V talked about of, hey, I, I was burnt out. People are getting more and more burnt out more than ever. This work from home uh, kind of situation has people working. I think it's about 10% to 20% more hours per week. And there's some studies that show once you get up to about 55 hours per week on average, uh, then you get to that burnout point. And you might say, hey, I work 50 hours a week. I work 60 hours a week. I work 75 hours a week. Doctors are working 100 plus hours a week, right? But, but burnout is a real thing. And whenever we translate that to some of the mental health concerns, there's a big time problem around us taking care of ourselves. So whenever we step back and think about this power of people helping people, mm -hmm. and so that we can proactively, uh, you know, address and mitigate some of those, uh, you know, concerns inside. And so if we don't have our people, right, they're burnt out, they're gone. It's pretty hard for our team to be successful. So, uh, Ditto on what you're saying, been there, uh, done that, lived that, uh, and now it's time to, to help others build a little bit of balance back into their life and establish some belonging uh, throughout all of those crucial, uh, difficult, uh, you know, kind of points through our lives. So who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here today? 
Uh, I grew up on a farm uh, in Butler, so right outside of the city. And both my parents grew up on farms. If you're familiar with Ross Park Mall, you know, years and years mm -hmm. ago, that used to be Sherm's Farm. So cool. Oh, wow, I uh, did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so cool tie uh, to, to the area. And uh, growing up, my, my parents always taught me that, uh, you know, you want to work hard, you want to make the lives of others better, uh, and you're not allowed to have fun until your, your work is done, right? Um, so that's how, how I grew up. And then I realized, okay, so if I want to make the lives of others better, um, how am I going to do that? And for me, it was connecting people together. Mm -hmm. So growing up, it's, hey, who can, you know, I, I get help from, to help me out with my math homework. Where can I go play basketball? And who can help me fix my tractor, right? Everybody has those questions, uh, especially up in, in rural Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, and then I went to high school at Knock and then down to Swickley Academy. And these experiences opened up my eyes to opportunities that I didn't know existed before. So I'm in sponge mode, right? Hey, how'd you get to where you are today? What do you like? What do you not like? How can I help you, right? So that sense of uh, being there for somebody else and going across you know, those borders, because I didn't look like everybody else on the inside or the outside. Believe it or not, there's not a whole lot of people with a farming background at Swickley Academy, right? Mm -hmm. But how awesome was it that the community just invited me in and said, hey, you know, you have a good, good attitude. You are, you know, kind of walking the walk and talking the talk and you're, you're a genuine individual. So these are some of the things that I learned over time is you, you get what you see whenever you work with Pete Schramm. Right. And there's plenty of stuff that I don't know. And there's plenty of things that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working to get a lot better at. So then uh, I went to college in Washington, D.C. at Catholic University after visiting like 65 different colleges. I was like, this is the place uh, that I'm meant to be. And during my freshman and sophomore year, I made it my goal uh, to meet at least one new person every single week. Oh, wow. Because again, what did mom say? Uh, years and years ago, uh, our job is to make the lives of others better. So me being the connector, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You're from uh, right out, this is something interesting, right? From right outside of Philly. I realized that right outside of Philly has like a 500 mile radius. So you can say uh, just, just about anything. Uh, so I'm meeting different people, played basketball, played track. I worked at the fitness center. There was just about anything that you could do, I did so that I could keep meeting people and connecting them together. And then halfway through my junior year, I was like, you know what, I'm going to quit sports and I'm going to go to Hong Kong, the other side of the world, uh, to study for six months. I'd never been out of the country before. So farm boy uh, to, to Washington, D.C., to Hong Kong, kind of a big thing. So there's this recurring theme of challenge and opportunity, mm -hmm. right? I want to challenge myself to push out of my comfort zone and then provide access uh, to opportunities so that I can continue bettering those around me came back, finished school, undergrad mechanical engineering, grad school mechanical engineering, and I went to work at Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was so interesting to me uh, because of the work they did in the energy sector. And you're like, what? Lockheed Martin? That's like rockets and planes and ships and things like that. Uh, yeah, well, I was interested in the energy part because again, whenever you can provide sustainable and renewable energy to different people, uh, you know, anywhere in the world, then you're bettering their lives, right? So you see that common theme of like yeah. people helping people and, and doing good for them. And the first thing I, I asked my boss, I said, hey, how can I be the best employee you've ever had? What can I do to make your life easier? He said, well, know what I'm going to ask before I ask you, um, figure out how to excel in your role and find yourself a mentor. Great. What's a mentor? Where do I find one? And uh, I, what do I do with them? Yeah. And he said, well, you just kind of take some time uh, and they, they come to you. And I'm like, man, all right, let me, uh, let me take uh, some time and figure out this thing that I need uh, and figure out you know, what, what, what this process is. So over the next couple of years, uh, I found that I had peer-to-peer -peer mentors with my mm -hmm. friends, right? So side to side. And then we would actually share our kind of professional, more senior, more experienced mentors uh, with one another. And then they would do a little bit of sponsorship saying, hey, uh, Pete, you should have a conversation with this individual for this reason. So they were putting their kind of social capital on the line. And then you would kind of share other mentors across. And so it's, again, this whole concept of people helping people. So mentorship, giving of your time, sponsorship, giving of, uh, you know, kind of your, your uh, social capital, right? Putting your name on the line. And then allyship is whenever you would go across, uh, you know, borders. And you taught 
me all about that. So I'm excited to kind of hear your spin on those three different things. Uh, but then, okay, so you're like, okay, uh, working at Lockheed Martin all around the country, you know, these different people coming together, where's Lattice come into it? Mm -hmm. So in just like you were saying earlier in the introduction, uh, beginning of 2018, people from my high schools are calling me, college are calling me, across Lockheed Martin are calling me, and they're saying, hey, Pete, can you help me prep for an interview? Can you look at my resume? What's it like to be working in the, the real world? Uh, can you connect me to this kind of person? I'm like, yes, 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 because this is what gets me fired up on the inside. Clearly, I get a little bit of energy whenever I talk about this, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have all the answers, and I didn't know, um, you know, I didn't have all the time either. So on March 4th of 2018, I drew a line in the sand and said, uh, we've got to solve this problem. Everybody deserves to have equitable access to unlimited opportunity. Yeah. There's an easier way to streamline this process of engaging uh, with one another. So fast forward three and a half years, I am now full-time entrepreneur. It's been one year, uh, almost, almost one year since I made the full-time leap, left corporate America. Uh, and it's the hardest you know, journey that I've ever embarked upon. It's like climbing a mountain, but you don't know where the mountain is. And, and it, it keeps getting higher. Every time yep. you get to get to the next level, it just keeps getting higher. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The, the fall summits. And then some days you're like, huh, I think I'm on the wrong mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that story. And I love how you broke down the three, you know, mentorship, sponsorship, and allyship, right? And so I think you said, correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but mentorship is sharing your knowledge. Sponsorship is sharing your social capital. And allyship is, you know, similar relationships are really making that connection across some sort of meaningful difference. So I always say, you know, you can be someone's mentor, or sponsor, or advocate, or cheerleader, or advisor, but if you're not different in some meaningful way, whether it's across gender, across race, across sexual orientation, ableism, it's not allyship, right? It really requires, you know, the difference. And I think about, you know, allyship in the terms of politics and countries, right? Like the U.S. can't be an ally to itself, right? So, you know, it, it's having across borders and in the case of allyship across these identity borders, identity differences that we have. Uh, and so the fact that you are making it your mission to create more, as you said, equitable access to mentors and sponsors and ideally allies, I think is yeah. just such a beautiful thing. Um, and so, I, you know, you've just really gone all in with, you know, mentorship, built a whole platform around it. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, some of the, the impact that you've seen with mentorship, uh, you know, whether in professional or personal relationships, because I feel like sometimes people need that extra push to either be a mentor themselves or seek out mentors. So it'd be great to hear about some of the impacts. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a, a couple of things, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you, you always want to figure out um, what's in it for me. Mm -hmm. And you want to answer that question ahead of time. And so it has to be easy to, you know, go through this process. Oh my goodness, a new program, a new tool, a new initiative. Nobody has time uh, for something else. So you have to answer that why first. And then you have to figure out the, you know, the how, right? What is it that we're going to accomplish here? And then answer that, that last question of what's in it for me and answer that ahead of time. So whenever we think about, you know, kind of beginning with the end in mind, what are the results? What are the outcomes? It's rebuilding your self, sense of self-worth. We think mm -hmm. about Maslow's hierarchy, right? What's at the top of that? Your self-actualization mm -hmm. and inside. And so whenever you're actually helping people, right? Having a conversation, by right, Taking it some time to, to step back and breathe and just listen as a mentor, you're actually able, there's, there's give and take that's built into that. So whenever I talked about that peer-to-peer -peer concept and that mentor-mentee concept, both people are, uh, you know, winning. So win-win. Mm -hmm. Right. And this every one of these engagements is mutually beneficial when done effectively. So some of the results and impacts, uh, people say, wow, I didn't know that uh, you know, these opportunities existed before. Um, you know, they say, hey, uh, I, I have another cheerleader. Right. And Oprah has a great, great quote about mentorship. A mentor is somebody that helps you see the hope inside of yourself. Mm. A mentor is, is somebody that, who helps you see the hope inside of yourself. And so that's, that's what it's all about. There's plenty of things, like I said before, that I don't know 
So I go to the individuals that that's where they are experts indeed in that area. And so other folks have uh, been able to learn about career opportunities, prepare for an interview, uh, get multiple job offers. Um, and so this was instances whenever uh, they found a mentor uh, outside of their organization, they got a 50% raise, 60% raise, 70% raise, but more important than that, they found their true calling. So a mentor is somebody that can help you uh, align what you want to do with where you can go, mm. right? So align some of those strengths and missions personally to some of those things professionally uh, inside of organizations. And then whenever you think about some of the statistics on a more macro scale, you know, people that uh, have a mentor are five times more likely uh, to, to get promoted. So whenever you think about it from an organizational perspective, hmm, why would we not have a formal structured mentorship program if we're going to have you know more productive people that can help us push the uh, entire organization uh, further, right? Whenever you have more engaged uh, workforce, uh, they're you know more 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 profitable, more productive. It's actually safer. Uh, environment as well. We talked about burnout before, right? So more engaged, right? People helping people connecting on a persistent and consistent basis. It doesn't always have to be, you know, a, a formal structured mentorship program, right? Hey, V, me and you are going to talk once a month. Uh, you can have that feedback partner, right? You can have that accountability partner. You can have somebody where you say, hey, I see you're doing IO psych. I don't even know what that is. Sounds pretty cool. Like your bio, you know, something is suggesting that we have a conversation. Uh, so whenever we think about mentorship, it can be as simple as X or as complex as Y, uh, but it really comes down to taking a little bit of time to do it on a persistent and consistent basis. There's so many things in there. So first off, I, I see everything in the lens of diversity, equity, inclusion. That's my life. I agree with it. I live it. I work in it. And that what you said about that five times more likely to get a promotion and move to the organization. In, in the context of DEI, that is a big problem that organizations are trying to solve right now, especially organizations when you look at the workforce demographics, you see diversity, you see, you know, close to 50-50 gender with, with the men and women, you see representative data of, you know, those who are in different ethnic groups or sexual orientations or all these different, you know, slices of diversity. But then when you start looking at that data at the at the leadership level, you lose all that diversity the higher you go up the hierarchy, right? And so the question that so many companies are trying to solve is how do we get more people from underrepresented groups into these higher up leader positions and, and also to not be leaving the organization to begin with, right? And so this idea that mentorship can be such a powerful tool for getting underrepresented groups, you know, higher up, getting the promotions, getting them to stay, that's really powerful. Another point I wanted to dig a little deeper into, and so thank you for answering that question about the impact both of the individual level and the organizational level, but the with them, the what's in it for me for the mentor, right? Because that's something I'm always trying to think about in concept top in the context of allyship, right? How do we make the case that being an ally benefits yourself as well and, and getting people to you know more willingly step into allyship? And so what, you know, you mentioned it, it's a two-way street and everyone benefits from it. What are some of the benefits specifically that the mentor receives from mentoring relationships? Yeah, so some of the uh, pieces of reverse mentoring, mm. right? So you might, might learn and think about this, right? We're inside of a, a, a company, uh, maybe in the Pittsburgh area. I'm a new employee, right? Hey, uh, you know, I was told that I should, you know, participate in our, our, our mentoring program and I have to have, you know, at least one conversation uh, a week, 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to ask some of these questions. Uh, hey, how, V, how'd you get to where you are today? Maybe you're a, a senior, uh, you know, program manager. You've been at the at the firm for for 20 years. Okay, V, how'd you get to where you are today? Uh, what do you like uh, about this this job? What gets you fired up uh, to come to work each day? What's a tip for somebody in my shoes right now? And so then you, as you're answering from a, a kind of uh, mentor uh, capacity, right, giving it back, paying it forward, you're able to reflect on some of your stories a little bit, mm -hmm. and you can kind of listen to yourself and figure out. What is it that's most uh, you know, kind of top of mind for you and how you uh, convey those thoughts and ideas whenever you answer those questions? So it's a way for you to kind of check in with yourself, uh, but also it feels good to, to hand off that tribal knowledge. 
And this is something that helps helps us, uh, you know, release uh, some of that the the dopamine, the serotonin, and you know those those chemicals inside of our our minds uh, through, you know, having these kinds of, of conversations. So whenever we talk about those kinds of things, we're putting ourselves in a more healthy state mentally, going back to that burnout piece. Mm -hmm. How do we build in balance, establish belonging, strengthen culture to drive down, uh, you know, burnout and ultimately, uh, increase retention. Yeah. Because that's an issue that's, you know, more prominent now than ever. There's a survey that came out by Microsoft. Uh, they said in the very near future, more than 40% of people uh, are going to be leaving their jobs. Uh, it used to be 25% uh, like a year or two ago. And before that, it was 15%. So you think about that, 100-person organization and 15 people are on average going to voluntarily leave every single year. It's, it's a great a, resignation. You know, I talk about it in my HR yeah. class all the time. You know, what, yeah. what can companies, what should companies be doing to prepare for this? And, you know, all those amazing outcomes you just mentioned, I think it's, it's a no brainer of getting people to connect and be, you know, supporting each other, uh, especially in the context of mentorship. Pete, I can talk mentorship, allyship, sponsorship with you all day long, uh, but I know our viewers, you know, they, they're very busy people. And so I do want to wrap up our conversation for today and also make sure that they know how to get in touch with you afterwards. So before we jump into that, what are three tips that you would give to those out there who are ready to venture into mentorship and what, you know, what they can do to be either a good mentor or mentee to start this type of, of meaningful relationship in the context of mentorship with one another? Yeah, definitely. So uh, it's not one size fits all. Right. So whenever we think about, uh, you know, what exactly am I looking for? <clears throat> Uh, it doesn't always have to be, we're going to get coffee uh, every single week. We're going to talk, uh, you know, once a month and here's our set agenda. Uh, it's not going to be the same every single time. All right. And you're going to have different, uh, you know, mentors. I like to think of it as like a personal board of advisors, right? You're going to have like your buddy, you're going to have your mentor, you're going to have your champion, right? At varying levels of experience. And you're going to ask each of those individuals different things. You're going to get different insights, perspectives, and experiences from each of them uh, along the way. And whenever you're early career, mid career, late career, you're going to need different things from each of those mentors, right? Each of those transition points, hey, I'm getting ready to change my job. What should I be thinking about? What should I do? What should I not do? Right? So it's not one size fits all, just like us, right? And yeah. this is something that I've learned from, you know, uh, Nikki, right? Uh, mm -hmm. One of our, 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 our good friends uh, that, you know, we can't be bucketed into 16, you know, different personality types. Uh, same thing with a, a, a mentorship program, same thing with a, an engagement program. It's not one size fits all. Uh, and then the second thing is prepare, right? Mm -hmm. So anytime you have an interaction with your mentor, with your mentee, with your coach, your ally, your sponsor, you want to set up an agenda ahead of time, just like we did, right? For this today, you're like, hey, Pete, I want you to talk about three things at the end, right? So there's a little bit of preparation that goes into yeah. it. So think about your agenda, right? What are the questions that you're going to ask ahead of time? Think about your notes, right? I'm a big notebook guy over here. Uh, and one of the nice things about Lattice is that all of this is in one place. So we'll get to that afterwards, but you want to prepare uh, so that you're being respectful of their time. That helps you, uh, you know, build trust and rapport uh, and respect, right? Showing that, hey, I care about this. I'm appreciative of, you know, what, what you're doing for me. And then the, the last thing I'm going to kind of do a, a one-two punch is the attitude of gratitude and be persistent and consistent, mm -hmm. right? So consistently, you know, be grateful. And, you know, I'm grateful of this opportunity to, again, talk with you and share, you know, more of these stories. Uh, but, you know, whatever you do, you know, I recommend you try and do, do some of this outreach on a, a weekly basis. Take at least 30 mm -hmm. minutes to check in with other people, even if it is that accountability partner, even if it is, you know, to get some feedback from your peers, from your leaders, uh, from people outside of your organization, right? Just to do those, those check-ins, but still have the agenda. So if we think about that, that's, uh, it's not one size fits all, right? A little bit of prep work goes a long way uh, and then be persistent and consistent, especially whenever it comes to gratitude and thank yous. I love that. You're amazing, Pete. How can people get in touch with you and give us, give us a little pitch for Lattice. I, I feel like it's such an amazing tool. I, Quick plug for Manually Solutions too. We have a whole line of partners and services that we call Inclusalytics, which is tech enabled, um, you know, platforms, tools to be able to collect 
data that has to do with inclusion. And I feel like Lattice fits really nicely into that. And so uh, offline, let's talk about partnership opportunities between Mattingly Solutions and Lattice. But how can people get in touch with you and what is Lattice all about? Yeah, so Lattice is all about people helping people. And it's spelled with a U-S, L-A-T-T-U-S, because it's not about I, it's not about me. I can't do all of this on my own, but us together, right? Harnessing the power of us, unleashing uh, the power of us, igniting uh, productivity inside of organizations. That's what Lattice is all about. And whenever you look at the logo, it's kind of like the L-A-T-T-I-C-E, the mm -hmm. thing you see in your garden that's helping vertically growing plants reach mm -hmm. higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see the growth mindset throughout the entirety of the platform because, you know, it's all about putting our, you know, people in the environment to succeed. And I love, right, coming from the farm, right? If you're screaming at your plants, right? If they don't have sunlight, they don't have, you know, enough water, they don't have fertilizer, there's too many weeds in there. You have to sometimes cultivate the environment. So what's Lattice all about? Lattice is all about cultivating retention and high performance. We do that through uh, the software platform where people can go in and say, hey, this is what I want to talk about to learn, to teach, and why. Step two of the platform, you put in your Lattice hours, right, where you can integrate your uh, calendar, kind of like Calendly if you've used that before. So you're meeting with other people on your time. Three, you get matched and have the conversation. So video player is integrated. You're not giving out your phone number. You're not giving out your uh, email address. So it is that uh, kind a trusted, private, secure piece. And you don't have to worry about another app to download, right? There's no Zoom, no Teams, no Skype. It's all in one place. And then step four is where you actually track your agenda, notes, and relationships over time. So we've had a couple of conversations. I could go back into Lattice and see when's the last time I talked to V, what do we talk about? What were my action items? So it adds a lot of structure. And so we're working with more than 50 organizations across the country right now. And it's time to scale up and help a lot more people. We talk about how, you know, the power of people helping people is needed now more more than ever. So how can you get in touch with me? Uh, go to lattice.com, L-A-T-T-U-S.com, and you'll see a, a, a sign up page, right? Join our newsletter, right? We're always sharing some, uh, you know, educational content about, you know, how you can uh, engage with others. Send me an email, Pete at lattice.com, P-E-T-E at L-A-T-T-U-S.com. Follow, you know, me on uh, LinkedIn. I think V will share it uh, in the post. Uh, follow us on, on Instagram at, at Lattice Inc. and share your story. Right? We're all part of this solution. Uh, you know, we're all part of the, the us. And uh, Mattingly Solutions is already a partner uh, on the inside. Now we're just going to make that public knowledge yeah, so that everybody else knows about it. Love it. Pete, thank you for everything you do to help improve the human experience at work. I love watching Lattice grow. I'm excited to have such a great partner here in the Pittsburgh area. And yeah, thanks for joining us today on Better Humans at Work.